Last week, contract workers at the U.S. Capitol went on strike to advocate for better working conditions and higher wages. And now, some of those workers are taking further action by raising money online to support their fellow workers who are also struggling. So this is an incredible story. Listen to this. Quote, the crowdfunding campaign is being led by homeless Senate contract worker Charles Gladden. By day, Gladden works as a custodian in the Dirksen Senate office building. By night, he sleeps at Washington's McPherson Square Metro Station. His story prompted the attention of several senators, including Bernie Sanders and Dick Durbin, who wrote a letter to the Senate Rules Committee asking for better wages and benefits for Senate contract workers. Gladden's plight also caught the eye of Boys to Men lead singer Nate Morris. Over the weekend, Morris started a crowdfunding campaign and personally pitched in $10,000 to help Gladden find a home. Others quickly raised another $11,000. Now Gladden wants to raise money for his fellow contract workers. Wow. So, understand what's going on here. You have some of the most powerful people in the country and some of the richest people in the country, people with the most connections, politicians, senators, people at the Capitol. They're going about their business, doing their, da their daily duties. Meanwhile, the people who are cleaning up after them and keeping the place clean, not only are they not earning a living wage, some of them are homeless. Some of them are homeless. I mean, if that's not the perfect story that really encompasses the tale of two Americas that we're dealing with right now, I don't know what is. Like, I just picture it in my head. You see an asshole like Lindsey Graham walking to his office and he just ignores as he's walking by some hard worker who's changing the garbage or something like that. And, you, you know, Lindsey Graham, the dollar figure... Uh, you know, how much money he makes and what his net worth is, I don't know. But he's doing all right. And he's just going about his business, eating a, a, a lunch with lobbyists and having some cocktails and just relaxing, only working pff, less than half the year, if that, living a luxurious life, multiple homes. And then you got this poor guy who's busting his ass working for these people, and he ends up, you know, without a bed to sleep in at night. This is the country we want to be. I mean, think about, stop and think about it, and try to be as objective as you possibly can. Imagine this story, this story came out of the Soviet Union, or Russia right now, or anybody who we would consider an enemy, right? This is one of those stories that, like, generations later we'd tell it as like, oh, look at how fucked up that place was, man. You want to hear a crazy story? People would go to work at the Kremlin, they're super rich, and they got all these powerful connections, and they're living these amazing lifestyles, and the people who would change their garbage and make their food and all that stuff in the building, clean the floors, you name it, those people were homeless. Isn't that, doesn't that just show how terrible the Kremlin is and how backwards that system was? That's that's a story we tell, but when it's us, you know, it, it, you get one or two articles online about it in good publications. This isn't brought up on CNN. This isn't even brought up on MSNBC. You know, this isn't brought up in any of the mainstream media outlets. And, you know, it just it's a story that shows up for two days and it's gone and it's out of the America's collective consciousness. Why? Why should it be? This See, to me, you know how every time you turn on the news, like something might uh, catch a few news cycles and they'll blow up a story like the missing plane, for example. Remember that where uh, CNN couldn't stop talking about the missing plane or Ebola. They if, uh, Ebola's coming to Cleveland. Meanwhile, it didn't at all, at all, at all. So those things get like nonstop coverage, week straight. Let's fear monger, breaking news all day long. But then when you get a story like this, no, no, no. If you want to do that over the top, oh my God, this is crazy coverage for anything. Do it for this story. Look at what's going on here. Why should it be the case that anybody and everybody working in the Capitol building, why shouldn't they at least be making a, a middle-class wage? Or look, even if you want to still be a dick about it, at least give them the bare minimum of a living wage where they can afford a fucking apartment as they come and clean up after dickhead John McCain. Are you kidding me? This is the state of America right now? Here's how you know this is out of control. Obama did an executive order mandating a $10.10 minimum wage for all new federal contract workers. And that's still not enough. So, like, it, again, it just, this story just describes America perfectly. The better political party, the Democrats, they stood up and fought and did the right thing. This oh-so-liberal president, he stood up and he fought 
And by golly, he rose that minimum wage to uh, something that's still less than a living wage. Somebody play the sound effect for me. Like the roaring Democrats. We're going to fight for the working people. We just got you more money that you still can't live on. What? Why did we do that? Look, and even notice the way I phrase that too, because this is important. I said, and this is how they frame it in the article here on Huffington Post. They say, Obama did an executive order mandating a $10.10 minimum wage for all new federal contract workers. So for all we know, this poor guy that we're talking about in this story, Charles Gladden, he was probably there longer, and oops, the the executive order that raises the minimum wage doesn't apply to you because it doesn't apply retroactively. Only new people get it. Number one, it should obviously be retroactive. Number two, you have to at least do a living wage, which according to some economists is $12 an hour. But my new favorite proposal in that realm is I'd like to see a federal law that uh, mandates that it's a living wage on a state-by-state -state basis. So in other words, you have economists calculate what a living wage is in Wyoming versus California versus New York. And so, for example, in, Cal in, in Wyoming, it might be $10.37 you could live on. Okay, then that's the, the minimum wage in Wyoming. In LA or in uh, New York City, the minimum wage might be $17 an hour. Okay, then that's what it is. So that's what we really should do, and chain it to inflation. Do a living wage all around the country and chain it to inflation so that we never have to come back to this issue and keep raising it. We could just have the minimum wage be a living wage, and then we have a much better system where we don't have an insane story to tell you in the year 2015 where people working at the Capitol are homeless as they're serving the most powerful people in the world.